Good evening, everyone, and welcome to McStabber Studios' special one-shot of You Will Destroy Something Beautiful. I am your game master, also known as MC, for this game. My name is Relin Dare. I am also known as Mama McStabber in Twitch chat. And tonight I am joined by these players who are going to be playing Destroyers, Come to Destroy Something Beautiful. Players, go ahead and introduce yourself. I am, of course, Shanky McStabber. You all know me from the channel. Um, and I'm McStabber Studios on Twitter. Uh, my name's Brad, uh, Timber Brad 411 in chat. Um, the only place anyone knows me from is probably here uh, between Call of Cthulhu and Werewolf. I'm Zem. Uh, my handle's usually Zem the Mattress, and uh, I play some one shots on here, and I've been over on Onyx Path. Here. Fantastic. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me. So, Destroyers. You have come here to this place to destroy something beautiful. Now, Zem, I'd like for you to start us off. Tell us something about this place. I see the finest restaurant that ever existed. The most gourmet smells waft through my nostrils. And I hear the music of jazz musicians coming from somewhere. Okay, I'm going with the finest restaurant in existence. You've already stated some smells that might be tied to this place. And ambient music with this place. Now, Bill? Would you like to pick up from that or further elaborate on that? Actually, I want to further elaborate on that. It, the restaurant actually used to be a church. Ooh. It's a Jesuit style Gothic church that has been turned into a restaurant. So we're looking at a stone building, almost looks like a fortress. And this, the stained glass has actually been replaced, of course, mm -hmm. instead of religious scenes. It has been replaced with modern glasswork. Okay, some stained glass. Now, Brad, would you like to elaborate on the things that your other destroyers have provided, or would you like to create something new in this location? I think I want to elaborate. Okay. Um, the, it, the light is very low, and there's uh, like candles. Um, so it's kind of got that like spooky sort of um, feel to it. Um, but like low lighting with the music, very sort of like a jazz club kind of feel almost. Okay. All right. So destroyers, you need to collaboratively work together and present one final descriptor for this setting, this location, that the beautiful thing is found in. So start throwing out some ideas and let's see what, what takes. Hmm. I'm trying to think, we got the jet, the music, we've got the... So it almost kind of makes me think about how like people say like jazz is the devil's music being in a church. <laughs> and then there's sort of like the like that gothic feel to it, but then there's also like the fire with the the candles and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So thinking, let's also consider if you were to find this beautiful thing in this restaurant, where would it be? What would be around it? What what basically? What, you know, to, we don't know what the beautiful thing is yet, but we need to start considering, okay, you walk into the restaurant, you get this sensory experience, you see what's around you, where are you gonna find this beautiful thing? Uh, the easy answer is an altar, and I don't think that's what we should use though. Okay. We just I think we should avoid that. Banquet table. A banquet right table? in the middle of the restaurant. Yeah. A banquet yeah. table, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay. 
but it's not a modern one. It's actually one that was originally. It's like a, it's like an like old a stone one, like a, a old yeah. gothic stone. <laughs> yep. like, yeah. Oh, nice. It was I originally like part of the church that they've just turned into a And is it, is it covered with food? What, what do you think might be on this table? Just to give me some ideas. Well, I mean, you already said it's a great restaurant. It's a, a very mm -hmm. uh, great food. So probably would have some. So food it's like on a it. buffet on this. I table? wouldn't go buffet. I think it would be. Um, of course, you'd have your version of the dessert tray there, of course, to show people the dessert you could okay, get. Okay, so it's like a display of various specialties. And maybe kind of where they they grab the stuff to do table side service. Got you. Got you. Okay. Got you. Because if we're going fancy, we got to have good table side service. I like it. Okay, good. Because these are all things I can use as distractions. Perfect. I love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, destroyers, we're going to get into describing the beautiful thing. The base rules for this system, as designed by the designer Samantha Day, said for destroyers to basically do four things total for the beautiful thing. And after running this a few times, I have realized when I'm playing with a group of three destroyers, it leads to it being a bit short and weighted very heavily towards the destroyers succeeding. And I'm not saying I want to set y'all up for failure. That's not the type of GM I am. I like for there to be happy endings. I really do. I promise. But, <laughs> but what I would like to do instead is have you each tell me two descriptors of the beautiful thing. And we will go around the group twice to do so. So come with come up with one descriptor. The next person builds off of that, so on and so forth. And then we come back around and do another round of that. So that way we'll have a total of six descriptors for this beautiful thing. Okay. Sounds All good. right. Zem, go ahead and start us off with one descriptor of the beautiful thing. What is it? In the center of the table is an ornate silver platter, the kind that you would open up and reveal something. So a covered platter. Mm -hmm. Covered silver platter, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now Brad or Bill, either one, whoever wants to bounce off of this. It's a covered silver platter. It's intricately carved by a master silversmith. And the carvings on it are actually show the religious connotations of the building it was put in. Okay. Okay. Brad, what's another descriptor for this? And it could be that the beautiful thing might be that, or it could be inside of it. I would say that the covered platter um, is heavier than it looks. Okay. So it's, it's harder to just pick up. Um, maybe there's a trick to it. Okay, I like that. Okay, we're going to go for round two. Now, I'd like to give a little bit, you don't have to do this, but just some options you may want to consider for descriptors. You may want to consider if the beautiful thing has something, you know, like a guardian or some type of trap system to it to prevent destruction. Um, that kind of thing, if you want. So. I've actually got an idea on that one. Okay. It's, uh, you can actually see the, uh, distortion of the air around it from the heat inside it. Oh, I like that. Okay. So Zem and Brad, go ahead and give me an additional descriptor each. Wait. Um, if you need me to summarize, I can. So I was thinking that there is a, uh, you were talking about like there being the table side service. So naturally there's got to be somebody to serve. Um, so I would say that there's like a, a, a maitre d' or uh, like a, a head server 
um, right next to the table at all times, um, sort of keeping guard slash watch over the okay. platter. All right. And Zem, what is the last descriptor of this beautiful thing? The Mater D has a uh, a chef's hat on, a hooded mm-hmm. cloak, and is skeletal features, no skin. Okay, so that's describing the guard. Oh, that doesn't count as a part of the beautiful thing. Mm-mm. Okay, but um, we'll, I will use that. I will use that because that's brilliant. I like okay. it. That that brings spook. I like it. <laughs> So tell me about tell me about the beautiful thing. What is what makes it so alluring? I mean, yes, it's be- it's it's a nice silver covered dish with these intricate carvings. But what makes you really you know what makes it so remarkable to everyone? The food on the inside, if you can stand it, will quench your hunger for the rest oh, of eternity. I like that. Yeah, I like that actually. That, I like that a that's lot. That's going to play very that, well with my that, character. That's the purpose of why it can be a good, a blessing and a curse. <laughs> so that's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> head server. Yeah, and I'm just going to make a note of the descriptors you added to the head server of the table. He is wearing a chef's hat. Yeah, that's going to play very well into what I do. skeletal features. All right. And dark clothing. All right. Fantastic. So he's going to look unassuming. I like it. A little freaky, but unassuming because he's going to look like bones. <laughs> All right. Very good. Thank you so much. So what we have is our setting is the finest restaurant in existence. You hear jazz music coming from it. You smell ridiculously tempting aromas coming from the building. The building itself used to be a Jesuit church. Basically, it's designed of stone and looks almost fortress-like. However, the stained glass has been replaced with modern designs. Once inside, there is candles around the tables and on the various serving tables and such that give a warm but slightly ominous glow. In a central featured location within this restaurant, there is a large ancient stone banquet table that has service items on it and a dessert display, and the beautiful thing. The beautiful thing is found within a ornate covered silver platter. The platter itself has been carved by a master silversmith with intricate religious symbols attributing the history of this location. The platter itself is much heavier than it looks, as if something odd is going on with it, because it should not be that heavy. You notice, as you get closer to it, that there is a distortion of heat in the air surrounding it from whatever is inside. You notice a head server near the table, dressed in dark clothing, wearing a chef's hat, But as you get closer, you see he actually has skeletal features. That's a bit disturbing. But no one seems to really pay any mind to that. Here. Just you. You know the food inside will quench your hunger for all of eternity. Inside of this beautiful, covered silver platter. So, Shanky, tell me 
Why have you come here, Destroyer? I have come here because all the hunger in the world is because of this object in this restaurant that contains sustenance for everyone. What has this beautiful thing done in your eyes to deserve destruction? It exists. By destroying it, I will end the hunger of everyone. Why are you cruel? Because of my righteousness. Who are you? I've lost my name long ago. But I'm an old man in a monk's outfit who's only called the penitent one. Well, Penitent One, I wish you luck on your task. Timberbread, why have you come here, Destroyer? Man's gotta eat. <laughs> and if this does what it says, I won't have to worry about that anymore. Got you. What has this beautiful thing done in your eyes to deserve destruction? Much like the penitent one, it exists. And it serves a purpose. Okay. Why are you cruel? There's beauty in cruelty. Hmm. Who are you? Uh, I am a retired deathmatch wrestler looking for that next step in my career. Okay. So your hunger is more than just physical hunger. Yeah. Absolutely. I get that. All right. I wish you luck in your endeavor. Zem, why have you come here, Destroyer? I've come here to get rid of this never-ending hunger. What has this beautiful thing done in your eyes to deserve destruction? It evaded me for so many years. Why are you cruel? Because life's made me this way with what it's kept from me. Who are you? I've been many things in my life. A peasant, a marooned sailman, but always eternally hungry.
All right. Very good. <sighs> so, you each have made it to this restaurant at the same time. You have come in, walked right past the greeter at the door, straight to the banquet table. No one stopped you. The head server, you think is looking at you, but without eyes it's hard to tell, but the, is generally facing your direction, seemingly watching you stare at this beautiful thing, waiting to see what you do. Who would like to attempt to destroy the beautiful thing first? I'm going to try to move the guardian. Okay. Roll your d6 and let's see if you are successful. I call upon the power of my faith to banish this demon. But I rolled a one. My faith is not enough, apparently. <clears throat> no, unfortunately it is not. The head server doesn't even flinch, doesn't move, just keeps looking. Now, in this failure, you feel something shift inside of you. Something is broken because you really believed you could do this and you failed. Which of your descriptors are you removing, Destroyer? And tell me how that diminishes you. I'm removing the faith itself. It diminishes me because that's what's guided me so long. That's what sent me here. It's what pushed me through everything I've been through to find this place. And in one action, it has crumbled before me. Quite sad. You will never be the same. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. Okay. Um, I would sit down the trash can full of weapons that I have with me <laughs> um, <laughs> and pull out a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire and swing for the guard's head. Okay, let's roll your d6 and see if it's a wiffle bat of doom. Or. <laughs> okay, it connects. And when that bat lands on that guardian's skull, it actually makes the Guardian collapse like a house of cards. And when that happens, the music in this restaurant becomes a cacophony, making it very hard for each of you to focus mm. on what you must do. And now, all eyes in the restaurant are on you. Next destroyer. I, I put my hand, both my hands to cover my ears to try to keep the sound out. And I, I rush at the platter and I, I try to kick it as hard as I can with my boot. Okay. Let's roll try your D6. Try to knock it off the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. let's, let's roll your D6 and see if you Two. can. Yeah, no. Um, n no, you fail. Um, you actually lose your balance as you are trying to kick because you are holding your hands up to your head. You do not have your arms down to help that balance as you raise your foot up. Mm -hmm. And you end up on your ass. You have failed. What has broken inside of you and how does it diminish you? As I'm kind of sitting there 
listening to the the loud noises or trying to ignore them, I I realize that I've just been focusing on the cruel and evil things, and and all of a sudden I get the flood of all the good memories and and all the good things that have happened in my life, and um, I lose the life has made me cruel trait. Okay, got you. So this actually helps soften you a little bit, not become so, not to be so jaded and jealous and envious and rueful. Interesting. An interesting change. I like it. All right, so that is round one. We have one success, so the guardian is down. That is lost from the beautiful thing. However, there were some complications from that success. Let me mark that the head server is now gone. There were two failures. Two destroyers have already started to be changed by this action forever. Now we go into round two. Who's going to be the first one to attack? There is a cacophony of music and all eyes are on you now watching you. Uh, with the the sound, um, it kind of strikes in me, you know, memories of the packed arenas and the screaming fans. Um, and more than distract, I think it kind of like jazzes me up. I could see um, that. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would uh, like immediately with the guard being gone, start trying to take a swing at the the platter, the okay. lid. Okay. Go ahead and roll your d6. One. <laughs> Knowing that this platter is heavier than it looks, you know it's difficult to pick up, but it's also surprisingly durable. When your bat connects with the platter, it shatters. Mm. Your, your bat does. Not the beautiful thing. So tell me, with this failure, something in you is broken. What is it and how has it diminished you? Um, I think that with the, the roar of the crowd or, you know, with the perceived roar of the crowd, um, he'd kind of realized that the, if his thirst or his hunger was quenched, that maybe he wouldn't have the drive to get better, you know? So I would say that he loses the reason why he came here to destroy it. It's okay. Um, he, it's not about quenching the hunger because the hunger is what keeps him going, forces him to be better. Okay. Very good. Very good. Who is going to go next? I think the, the monk will let the old man go next. His faith is still kind of... He's been shaken. Shaken. Mm-hmm. So, Zem, it's on you. What are you going to do for this beautiful thing? Uh... I am, I'm not as, as cruel or as angry as I was a moment ago. I'm going to take, take the negative consequences of trying to get this, this, this food. Um, and I'm, I'm going to reach for the lid and just try to pick it up. Just try to lift it up yeah. to access the food. Okay. Let's roll your D6 and see if you do. Okay. You do successfully raise the lid off of the platter. But before you can set it down, the immense heat coming from what's underneath it has warmed the silver so much that it burns your hand. But you set it down and you see an amazing spread of food on this platter. Everything you could ever consider your favorites are there. Very good. 
Your hand's going to be a little bit difficult to do stuff with, but very good. <laughs> All right. So, Shanky, the penitent one, have you found your resolve to move forward? Well, I found my guilt to move forward. There you go. Burdened by it all. That's a heavy burden. But it pushes me. It always has. That is why I'm penitent. And I'm going to attempt to sweep the food off the table into the floor. Okay, let's roll your d6 and see if you accomplish it. I got a six. You do. You see this old man in monk's robe take his arm and just drag it right in front of you and knock the food into the floor. And a collective gasp throughout the patrons of the restaurant and the staff there occurs. Not only that, but one of you was just about to eat it. And now it's in the floor. When you look at the food, you realize it actually isn't everything you've ever wanted to eat. Your favorites, it's rotten. That food will no longer quench hunger eternally. So with that, we've had two successes. The beautiful thing still has its base platter with intricate carvings. It is still quite heavy to lift that platter. The funny thing is there's still a distortion of heat coming from the platter itself. But some of you have been forever changed by this experience thus far. Let's continue on to the next round. I um I I kind of shriek in in uh, distress and I I dive for the the rotten food <laughs> okay. and I I take some in my my messed up fingers and hands and I try to stomach as much as I can down. Yeah, no, you're now retching. As soon as it goes down, you're retching it back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting there on the floor like no, no. <laughs> It's kind of screaming. Okay. So while you are doing that, because basically this monk just fucked everything up for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Classic shanky. Classic shanky. <laughs> there is a pattern. There is a pattern. <laughs> There's a reason I let him story tell me. I don't often play in games with him. <laughs> Different motivations for this one. But no. Um I, I will say that, yeah, um, we're going to pause on your character for now while he tries to come to grips with what he is experiencing. And we will deal with the other two destroyers to see if they want to try to deal with what is left of this beautiful thing. I'm ready to deal with it. I'm going to lay the sheer weight of my guilt onto the table to break it. Okay. The burden I've carried long enough. Roll your d6. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, you project all these feelings of guilt. So reticent, so penitent. I mean, it comes off of you in waves. People feel it around you. And then it just seems to bounce right off of the intricately carved silver platter right back at you. And you are knocked off your feet by the weight of it. So tell me what has been destroyed in you for this action. The guilt was lost. It knocked me over. 
but it kept going. What has made me who I am, the penitent one, that guilt I carried so long, is gone. Okay. Now I'm truly with no name. Okay. Very good. Brad. Seeing the old man still diving for the food that's clearly not of any use. Um, And because even though it's rotting um, and no longer appealing, it still exists. And so I think that needs to end. So I'll grab um, a fluorescent light bulb tube out of the garbage can. And I'm going to just start like smashing the light bulbs all over the food to make it less appealing to eat. Okay. Roll your D6 and see if you're successful. Six. All right. When you do that, the food shrivels, turns black, then it goes ashy white and falls to dust. Those of you looking and any of the patrons and staff in the restaurant looking towards the table actually notice that the resonance around the platter of heat is gone with this action. You were successful, however, the obviously enthralled individuals in this restaurant now stand up facing the three of you. You know if you don't get this done quickly, you may not walk out of here. So, the poor hungry man on the floor trying to eat and then retching up everything he puts in his mouth sees the food in front of him basically end up turning to ash and dust. There is nothing left to try to eat. What do you do? What's what's left of the, the beautiful thing? Absolutely. There is still a platter on this table mm-hmm. that is intricately carved with religious symbols. It does not have its cover anymore, but it is the platter itself. Um, okay, that's, pla- that's fine. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, and the platter is extremely heavy. <clears throat> okay. Um, I am going to uh, wipe the gross off of my mouth and stand up, and I'll, I'll, I'm trying to pick it up, and, and I'm going to swing it at the penitent one who's no longer penitent okay so i'm gonna fling it like like a xena warrior princess and try to <laughs> what have you done <laughs> yeah okay good good roll your d6 and let's see how this goes it never takes long for people to start attacking each other <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's a six <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. You are stronger than you look as well because you yank this platter off the table and sling it at that penitent one. Once you pick it up, it doesn't leave your hands, though. It's not actually going to fly like a discus or anything. But you do hit the penitent one. And it hurts. The penitent one now has an injury. (laughs) 
that makes him, he actually got hit in the head because he was sitting. And he is now confused a bit, a bit disoriented from the head wound. And the people within the restaurant move closer, almost robotically. But the beautiful thing has lost its trait of being basically too heavy to pick up because you've picked it up. But now it's in your hands. It's still a platter. So there we have it. There was round three. Let's go into round four. <laughs> People attacking each other. <laughs> that was so my just, dinner. <laughs> just, just for you my, bastard. just for my, my, um, yeah. sake. What, what do we have left of the beautiful thing? It's a platter. That's all that's left. That's there is it? one thing left. That platter needs to be destroyed in order to destroy the beautiful thing. But it is, is it now like it's stuck to my hand, right? Because, like maybe it attached to the silver that had melted onto my hand earlier. So it's just like it's like bonded. Yeah, on there. the heat yeah. of it, the heat of it burned it to you. Yeah, because yeah. because because what was on your hand was still fucking hot. It right, was just right. the platter itself that went cold. So when the cold hit the hot, it bonded. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, now it's part of you for that arm. <laughs> that arm is not going to last. <laughs> All right. So. Give him the chair. <laughs> who's going first? This yeah, who's time? going first this time? I mean, we, we've got we've got this guy with this platter just conked the crap out of the freaking. And I'm kind of mug. confused, so I'm gonna. I, I don't think I should be going first because I'm gonna confused. Go I, I, as soon as he's got a weapon in his, or the platter in his hands, I'm going <laughs> to assume. Attacking. I'm going to assume he he wants a match, in which case uh, I'm going to grab uh, a sledgehammer out of my trash can and swing for the platter. Okay. All right. Roll your D6. Let's see if you're good. Because I was trying to remember <laughs> if the, the table was a descriptor or if it was it's part a, it, of... It's part of the environment. It's part of the, the, the environment that we set up. Part, part of the idea was going to be to try to put him through the stone table. Which might be an option if we get to round five. <laughs> That's a three. Yeah, no, you don't destroy the platter at all. As a matter of fact, when you do swing that sledgehammer, what you hit is the arm, and the arm is broken, but it is still attached. And so is the platter. So now you've got a limp arm with the platter attached. <laughs> and I'm still hungry. <laughs> and you're still hungry. And you got an so arm. So tell me, with you missing your mark, I mean, you were you were a freaking wrestler. You were a pro at this. Hitting your marks, landing your cues, all that was important in your work. You failed. How does that affect you? Uh, I mean, it definitely makes me question um, whether or not it deserved to be destroyed in the first place. Okay. So you're going to um, remove what it's done? Yeah. Okay. Got it. So now you're not even certain that its purpose was that bad in the first place. So now you've got a healthy dose of uncertainty mixing around with those emotions. Yeah. All right. So we have one attempted attack failed. Who's going next? Struggling to my feet, shaking the cobwebs. I see the the heretic has failed. And I only have one thing left. The fire of my cruel, righteous fury. And that is what I'm going to unleash on both the old man, his arm, and the platter it's attached to. Okay. Roll your D6. Let's see. He struck a man of the cloth. 
Mm-hmm. And I got a four. You succeed. You know it. You feel it in your bones. This is all you have left, and you throw it at it. At the thing that is attached to him, dangling from his broken arm, you know it has to be destroyed. And if he suffers for it, it's justified, because he is a heretic. Burn the fucking heretics. What happens is significant. This righteousness flows through this entire building and all the candles and the fires from the fireplaces in this place, they all blaze up. It's blinding. It's holy. You can feel it. All of you can. The crowd screams in pain and agony. The platter attached to you melts from the heat, the heat that you can feel curling up your body. Zemma would like for you to roll me a d6. Six. As soon as the platter basically turns into liquid molten silver and falls to the floor. You you wrench your shoulder to get your arm away from it, and you start backing away from the monk towards the door. Brad, roll me a d6. Before I do that, can I not? You cannot. Because to me, with that crowd and the fire, mm-hmm. I've been through fire matches. Death matches, before. baby. Um, <laughs> and I think for me, especially losing the whole point of coming here. Mm-hmm. Like at this point, all I am is a wrestler, a retired wrestler looking for the next thing. And here is your next thing, baby. And that there's beauty and cruelty. Mm-hmm. What better place than a an, a former church filled with heat and flames and screaming I, people? This is a fucking match for the ages. <laughs> um, so okay. I I I would just grab the nearest weapon and go charging into the crowd. Okay, so roll your d6 and let me know what you do. Three. You roll, you start charging into the crowd. But these maddened people, they have gone mad. Rip you limb from limb. Ah, but I bet it's beautiful. Oh, it's glorious. It is glorious. You went went down in your last match and it was for the ages. You went down swinging. It's all I could have asked for. Yep. Now, Monk. I've lost my faith. Lost the guilt that sustained me. All I have left is my righteous, cruel fury. Mm -hmm. I have become a monster. Yes, you have. And of course I want to live because now... You have a new purpose. I must unleash this fury on all those without the faith or the guilt to temper it. Mm -hmm. Roll me a d6. Let me know if you can get out. A one... Yeah. <laughs> I only wrote it. <laughs> well, three men walked into this restaurant to destroy something beautiful. Three men enter. <laughs> only one comes out. One man leave. <laughs> Thunder Dome. <laughs> 
All right. So we heard what Shaky's destroyer had left and how it had changed them. We basically heard how Brad's destroyer had changed and what was left of them. Zem, tell us about your destroyer and what was left. As, as soon as he like leaves the restaurant. He, yeah. What is he now? He, he is just so hungry and yeah. there is, there is nothing that he can see outside of this restaurant. All the food of sustenance is on the inside. Mm -hmm. And he's desperately hungry. And now it's all in flames. And he he's going to try. Okay, so he's going to try to eat the flames. To eat, like to just okay. suck in and use the flames for sustenance. Okay, so basically, something. you you actually made it to the door just as you were about to step across that threshold. You realized all the food was in here. Yeah, and you turn back around and try to eat what is left inside, which is basically all on fire. Roll your d6 and let me know how you succeeded, or not. Five. Okay, you basically do and. The others have already fallen. They have already fallen. The monk was consumed by his own righteous rage. The wrestler thought he could power slam an entire crowd of enslaved, of enslaved and entranced people and got ripped limb from limb. And you consume this fire and righteous rage. But you have been forever changed because that rage came from that monk and now that rage lives in you. You feel full to the brim. And you are ready to make the world burn. Thank you, Destroyers, for playing this round of you will destroy something beautiful. You accomplished your goal, but not everyone survived. <laughs> oh, <that's> so awesome. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Good, good. All right. Thank you, everyone, so far. We will be right back after this short five-minute break. Um, so you can get up, go to the restroom, you know, get a drink, a snack, whatever. Do, do you come back in five minutes? We'll be back with another game of these players playing new destroyers and we will come up with a new location and a new something beautiful so we'll see you I'm, soon i'm gonna point out before we go and go break the first game zim and i played together he killed me <laughs> and died <laughs> <laughs> then we played together and uh well i just got murdered because of my own thing and brought back as a fox that was a different that one doesn't count right. and then in the other one i got him killed right and and then blew us up so i think this is the first time we've played together where you've survived and you know, just blatantly survived. So it's pretty good. I like that. Right, so. yeah. <laughs> we'll see you in a few minutes, yep. everybody.
And welcome back. So, we're back from break and we're about to play another game of You Will Destroy Something Beautiful with these chaotic players that decided to go for <laughs> each other in a free-for-all and it was fantastic. <laughs> you know, eating, burning, fi fiery stuff and <laughs> all good stuff, all good stuff. Okay, so destroyers, you have come here to this place to destroy something beautiful. Tell me about this place. Whoever wishes to go first can go first. One of you guys can start it off. Trying to think. It's okay. You can take a few moments. You know, actually, it's an island. Okay. It's an island. Surrounded by clear blue seas. Okay. Would somebody like to build off of that for our next descriptor? There is only one port okay. into the island. Um, yeah. Okay. Is it a port or does it just have one dock? Depends on how, how big is the island because I didn't specify a size. It could be That's a smaller island with a, with, a, with a single lonely dock. Coming out from it. What do y'all think? Are we going to make this really remote and small? Yeah, I think it would be a dock. I think it a would dock? be a, okay. a, yeah, a definitely a smaller island. Okay. All right. So we know it is a small island surrounded by clear blue seas. There is one small dock. Lonely dock. To tie a boat up to. To get access to this island not even big enough for a large ship to make port so what's next for this there is a well beaten path that goes from the dock to the center of the island Okay. Is this island forested? Is it rocky? Is it brushland? Is it grass? I would imagine, since we have a lonely a path going from the dock, it's going to have at least a, a little bit of trees for the path to have been worn. The only way to get through, yeah, dense trees, and that's what the path goes through, is the dense trees. It's the only way to get to, to the center of the To the, the island. center, basically a clearing in the mm -hmm. center. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That, okay. that works with the path. Okay. So that is our location. This location is a basically a deserted forested island in clear blue seas. The only access to it is this very, you know, minuscule dock. You have to get to it by small craft, small boat. And then there is a well-worn path to the center of the island where there's a clearing. So. All right. That gives me something to work with. Now, we come to the beautiful thing. I want each of you to give me two descriptors. We'll start with one each and then go back around and do another descriptor each so that we have a total of six. Whoever would like to go first, tell me the first thing about this beautiful thing found in the clearing. Surrounded by butterflies of all different shapes and sizes and colors. Okay. Someone like to go next? It's a person. A person. Oh, I like that. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, the person is holding a gnarled staff and remains motionless, like a statue, kind of. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the qualifier of motionless to the person, which was a descriptor, and then I'm going to add that the person is holding a gnarled staff as a second descriptor. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay, so that is one, two, and three. All right, so I need three more, one from each of you. So what we have is in this clearing of this heavily, densely forested island, there stands a motionless person holding a gnarled staff surrounded by butterflies of all shapes, sizes, and colors fluttering around him or her, not sure what gender it is under what I presume are robes. The butterflies don't land on the staff, but they do fly and tend to block your vision of this motionless person. Okay. I'm going to add that as a note for a qualifier. Give me another descriptor. Mm. They have wings on their back. The person has wings on their back. Like a butterfly. Okay. All right. Now, I had assumed that this person might be draped in a a cloak or something to obscure its gender. Is that the case? Because if not, this may be someone nude. I, I, when I said person, I imagine that it was a, a secret as in like, we didn't know. And it might be because the butterflies are obscuring your vision. You can see the outline of a person, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. I got you. Okay. So yeah. we, we will not specify. All right. Um, so give me another descriptor because we have four so far. <clears throat> There is an offering table in front of the uh, statuesque person. Okay. Does it have anything on it? Um, no, it is empty. Okay. So it's an empty offering table. That must be why it's motionless. The person's motionless. No offering was made. (laughs) All right. So final descriptor is going to be on Brad. If you'd like for me to surmise, I can. No. Um, Around the edge of the circle where the trees are, um, animals can be seen, but they don't enter the circle. Okay. So those are more like watchers. Mm -hmm. Got you. And since it's a descriptor of the thing, maybe they're linked to mm-hmm. the motionless individual. Mm-hmm. No, this is good. This is good. It's a different variation of the guard concept. So this is good. All right. Very good. Shanky. Why have you come here, Destroyer? For vengeance. Okay. What has this beautiful thing done in your eyes to deserve destruction? It's taken my twin from me. The other part of me, the part that made me complete. Okay. Why are you cruel? 
I'm blinded by hate. And lastly, who are you? I am the broken twin. No longer. We'd always been able to almost share thoughts, but that side is gone, broken, lost. I'm left with silence. Okay. Brad, why have you come here, Destroyer? To destroy. That's what, what I do. What has this beautiful thing done in your eyes to deserve destruction? It is rumored to be indestructible. And I need to prove that wrong. Why are you cruel? What is a monster if not cruel? Lastly, who are you? You've been called many things different cultures have different names but monster will work okay zem why have you come here destroyer make sure no one is ever lost on the pilgrimage to this thing again. What has this beautiful thing done in your eyes to deserve destruction? It gave people a reason to risk the open waters in small vessels. Why are you cruel? Because I lost my family because of this thing. Okay. Who are you? Just a lost and broken child. Perfect. <clears throat> so, the broken twin, the monster, and the lost broken child have all arrived on this island by their small crafts tied them up to the little dock posts traversed the well beaten path to the center of this island there is a slope as you walk up the path to the highest point of the island, which happens to be dead center. This island is not very large. It only takes you 20 or so minutes to walk the path. As you're walking, you hear and see glimpses of animals in the forest. It is densely forested, but you can see movement. 
and hear crunching of twigs and leaves. You also hear the leaves of the trees rustle in the wind. But as you approach the clearing, you see a figure motionless. But you can't make out if it's male, female, what it is. Because there is a swarm of butterflies of every color of the rainbow and all sorts of shapes and sizes, some large, some minuscule. But they are swarming around this individual who has a gnarled staff in its hand and it is standing behind an offering altar that is empty, barren of any offerings. And you just can't make out the person because the butterflies are right in front of your face as you approach. It almost inspires a sense of wonder in you. It is so peaceful here. So still, but yet so much movement at the same time. On this tiny island, secluded in peaceful, clear blue seas. But you all have come here for a purpose. You wish to destroy this beautiful thing either from just a desire to destroy anything you can or to prove that you can or because it has taken something from you, something precious, something that left you incomplete after its loss. Who is going to take the first shot? And what are you going to do, destroyers? I, as soon as I see the, um, the animals, um, on the edges of this clearing, mm -hmm. um, I take a look inward and start to rouse this power inside of me. Okay. Um, to... cause the blood inside of these animals to start boiling. Okay. Go ahead and roll your d6 and let's see if that works. Five. As you do this, you feel the power rise up in you. You're very familiar with this. You've called upon it many times. You get a wicked grin on your face. And then the animals start making the most horrific cries that breaks the silence of this place. The animals begin to fall. But as you hear the cries, you actually hear that they don't sound animalistic at all. They sound like the cries of men, women, and children. But you are a destroyer. You don't care. I'm a monster. I live for this. Exactly. However, your companions might be affected by this. But the animals are removed from the beautiful thing as they are subsequently falling as this plague strikes them, boils their blood within their own veins. Who's going next? I miss the screaming. I'll go next. I um, 
I, I keep my eyes low and I walk around until I'm standing in front of the altar, uh, the um, the offering table. Mm-hmm. And uh, I take a, a pickaxe out of my really matted bag and I offer a, a quick prayer and then remember what I'm doing and, and just start trying to smash this altar. Okay, roll your d6 and let's see if you succeed. Four. Okay. As you pick at this altar, it does start to crumble. The person turns and faces you. You still can't see it because of the butterflies but you know it has moved. Once motionless, it has now moved. And just as you land, the last strike to really destroy this altar, you see the shadow of that staff over your head. You have succeeded, but you are now in danger. Mm. Blinded by the hate. Been obscured by butterflies. And now you hear the screams. Don't care. Mm. Still consumed by hate. I pull out. It's not a whip. It's too thin to be a whip. But it's a long, thin cord. That, for some reason, I can almost move on my own as I whip it around. It dances. And I'm using it to tear the wings off all the butterflies that I see flying around. Clear a path. To destroy their wings. And my hatred. Okay. Roll your d6. Three. You know you can command this weapon. You're very skilled. But the butterflies keep dancing out of your way. You never can land a strike. Not a single wing is removed. You failed. What in you has been destroyed? A memory. Of what my twin looked like. What? Which descriptor is that? Memories. That wasn't a descriptor you gave me. I'm one of the broken twin. It's my link to him. Okay, the broken twin one. Okay, mm-hmm. thank you. <laughs> I've lost. I lost who the twin was. I don't know who okay. my twin was. Okay. And how does that make you feel? It's kind of rough. You. I'm blinded by hate, but I don't know why. I don't know why the hate is still there. Mm -hmm. Because I can't remember why I hate, but I still hate. Okay. So that is round one. We have a destroyed offering table. And a child destroyed it with a pickaxe. But now, that wicked-looking crook, staff, is poised over this child, obviously about to strike. The monster has boiled the blood of these animals that were watching this grove, this clearing. And the screams sound like people. And then this broken twin tried to take the wings from the butterflies to clear his view, to make sure he can see his target, and failed. And the look on his face is 
one of a bit of befuddlement. Like he's forgotten something. Round two. Who's going first? I'll go first this time. Okay. I'm going to use the same whip-like thing to try to grab the tip of the staff to yank it. Okay. Yank it out of the way from harming the child. Well, that's not why I'm yanking it. I know, but if it's I still, that will, be the, that will be the effect. <laughs> if I can't destroy the butterflies, I'm not going to let the beautiful thing destroy anything else either. Okay, got you. So let's roll it and see if you succeed. Four this time. Okay, you do actually succeed. All of you there see as this wicked little, it's almost like a wire, shoots out from the hand of this person, this man, and la and literally wraps its end around the crook of the staff. And he wrenches his arm back, and it retracts right back to him. And now, this broken twin has the staff in his hand. The individual that's surrounded by butterflies. You can now see as butterfly wings their self. Turns slowly and faces towards the broken twin, like it has all but forgotten the child that destroyed its altar. The beautiful thing is no longer holding a gnarled staff. But now her target, or his target, or its target, has changed. Who's going next? As the figure turns its attention towards the broken twin, um, I bite into my hand um, until I get like this like welling up of blood and I throw it towards the figure. And then as it lands um, on the figure's back, it's almost corrosive as it starts to try to eat away at the wings. Okay, roll your d6, and let's see if you succeed. Four. Okay. This... <sighs> monster has just slung its own blood at the beautiful thing. And it has landed on its back. And the wings are starting to disintegrate. The butterflies swarm you, monster. Completely swarm you, blocking your vision, and ability to aim from this point forward. They are now an obstacle to you doing further damage. But the wings of the beautiful thing have been destroyed. Child, what are you going to do? A lot has uh, happened. I... I stand up, I, I leave my pickaxe where it is, and I, I run over to the uh, the broken twin, and I, I try to see if, if the broken twin will let me have the gnarled staff. Well, I don't want the gnarled staff. Okay, so now you have a gnarled staff in hand. What are you going to do with it? I, I take the gnarled staff, and I, 
I know that this is how the statue controls these butterflies. And I pour all my focus and energy into the staff to make the butterflies do my bidding. Okay, what are you wanting them to do? Um, just come off of the monster and kind of form a circle uh, around, like a protective circle barrier around me. Okay, so let's roll your d6 and see if you were able to accomplish that. Six again. Okay, so... <laughs> this round's going... I know, this round's going well. really what? freaking fast. Oh my God, y'all are rolling too well. Um, yeah, no, because I'm like, um, oh God. But <laughs> we should have done like 12 descriptors. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, um, but no, what happens when you do this? You focus all this energy, this this will and desire and fear and despair that you've had carried with you for ever since you lost your family. You pour it all into your focus as you hold this staff. And the butterflies and swarming the monster and blocking its view. actually shift and change their direction come to you and surround you you don't see anything at all all you see is fluttering in color but you have never felt so protected in your life however The beautiful thing has lost its butterflies. It turns and starts to walk towards the tree line. Slowly. It's almost like it's in a different time phase or something. The beautiful thing is trying to get away. So. The beautiful thing is down to four things lost. In two rounds. <laughs> Good thing we went with extras. Yeah. <laughs> Almost a two-round game. <laughs> All right. So, actually, I will say it's it's actually it, it's actually down to one thing. It's actually down to one thing because I realized I didn't take off the butterflies yet. So it's down to one thing in two rounds out of six. Yeah. I think it still should have two left. I thought. Yeah. Yep. It, it, well, it's because it had the don't land on the staff, but they try to block your vision. No, and yeah, then, they had was... three successes in two rounds, and then Zim got a uh, fourth success. So that was four successes in two rounds. I was just counting successes. Hang on, I'm looking. Holding a gnarled staff, it got removed. Yep, that's one. The, the, butter, the, but, the wings on its back, gone. Mm -hmm. The offering table, gone. Mm -hmm. The animals, gone. Surrounded by butterflies, gone. Yeah, that's five. Mm. You lost count. Oh, my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it is down to just being a person, pretty much. And it's no longer motionless. It's like, y'all fucking around. I'm getting out. <laughs> oh, as, as soon as this thing's turning its back, the monster's pouncing. <laughs> yeah, and the, the broken twin actually is started a dance. Okay. So. But it, it's a dance that I have a partner, but... You don't see the partner. It's obvious that I'm only doing my half of a dance. And this thing is just moving with me the whole time. It's part of the dance itself. Now you, but I'm not attacking yet. I'm caught in my dance. Okay. So the child is now 
basically encased in butterflies, like a protective shell. The monster is pouncing. The broken twin is now doing an odd dance. It looks like it should have a partner involved. But there isn't. So that leaves the monster free to lunge on the retreating beautiful thing. And without reservation, it's my, it's the, the rumors are clearly blowing this thing out of proportion. And so I'm going to attack to destroy and consume. Okay. Roll your D6. A two. As you literally go to like almost all fours, rear back and just leap onto this beautiful thing. It literally seems to phase out just before you connect. And then it phases back in. On the other side of the tree circle, still getting closer to the tree line. You fall because you missed connecting? And when you fall, your you actually connect with a tree. It breaks your teeth from the impact. The trees here are ironwood. Tell me what you have lost from this failed attempt, monster. Well, my desire to destroy is stronger than ever, but maybe these rumors weren't blown out of proportion. (laughs) It's more formidable than I expected, given how... So you lose the rumors. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got you. I believe it now. You believe it now. Mm-hmm. But I want to destroy still. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't even have to touch you to do damage. <laughs> All right. So, child, are you going to do anything? Or are you just going to sit in your little cocoon of butterflies and be mesmerized by the colors and fluttering? Uh. Child's going to try to get the butterflies to pick up the beautiful thing, carry it as high as it can go with as, as high as the butterflies can carry it and then just drop it, drop this person. Okay. Go roll your D six and let me know if you succeed. I got a one. (laughs) And here it comes. (laughs) You know, the, the the wand was the control rod, as it were, for the butterflies. And when you try, but the butterflies know whom they really belong to. And when you try to get them to attack their master, you see, to their simple minds, they were just protecting a child that wasn't directly attacking their master. They pick you up and drop you at its feet. And the staff disintegrates in your hands. You have failed in commanding these butterflies to attack its their true master. 
What do you lose of yourself, child? I, I see the power before me and, and how I'm, you know, helpless against it. I lose the need to make sure no one is lost coming here because I see the value in it now. Okay. So, Broken Twin, have you completed your dance? Yes, I have. Okay. And the completion is to have the tip of this odd cord that, oddly enough, the tip is the most dangerous part of it. The stab, the beautiful thing. Okay. With the end as I complete my dance. All right. So as you come into the flourish of the finale of your dance, you lash out your arms with this cord attached to your hand, and it slings out towards the beautiful thing in a magnificent arc. And the sharp pointed tip of this cord plunges deep into the beautiful thing. And that person falls. But when it does, it actually has some of its blood pour out of it and it flows down the slope into the forest. Perhaps you have destroyed this beautiful thing, but that blood may summon something else later. Congratulations, destroyers. Now tell me, what of you have changed in this process? How are you now different? You each lost something. I've lost the twin, the memory of my twin. I'm still left with the hate. I'm left with the knowledge something should be there. But I don't know what's to fill the hole that was missing in me. Now you have a void. Yep. Was it worth it? Losing the memory of that twin? Still blinded in hate. Not hard to uh, go forward when you can't remember what you've lost only by remembering you've lost it that the pain comes in okay monster you failed to deliver that blow how has that changed you what are you now are you, i'm sure you're still a monster but the driving part of the the desire to destroy this particular thing being gone i am now just a wounded animal i'm my only i'm i'm wounded literally with my hand with my teeth and all i have left is this urge to destroy to be the monster mhm mm and was it worth it? No. Because I wanted to destroy. Yeah. And that broken twin was a bigger monster than you. Child, what in you has changed? How has this experience altered the person you are now? Now that the thing is gone, can I can I try something real quick? Maybe. What do you want to try? I, I want to pick up my pickaxe and try to see if I can control the butterflies again, remembering the feeling and the power of the staff from before. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Roll your d6 and let's see if it succeeds. Four. Weirdest thing. As you, monster, and you, twin, are... Contemplating how this experience has shaped you, you notice this child go up to the pickaxe by the rubble that was 
the altar. And pick up this pickaxe and hold it really tight in his, ha in his hands and closes his eyes real hard and just focuses. And the butterflies come to him. They encase you, child, and lead you to the forest. You will become the next beautiful thing. So I guess it doesn't matter if it was worth it or not because you are forever changed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're screwed. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight for this <laughs> crazy romp that we did twice. I love these players. They are amazing. <laughs> Fantastic story got crafted together tonight, and I, I'm so here for it. So here for it. Loved it. Every minute of it. Guys, did you enjoy yourselves? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. Hey, for a bunch of chaos gremlins, we weren't nearly as much chaos as I expected. From no, y'all were like really getting like intense and deep. And I'm like, this is good. <laughs> All right. Uh, well. See, I can play a serious game with Zim. <laughs> see, it's proven now. <laughs> and, I, and I got to like dabble my toes into forbidden water. So that yeah, was Yeah, you're fun. just a little Tremere just there. Just a little Tremere there. Just shut it. Just shut it. <laughs> I'm a monster. I don't know what you're talking about. I saw what you did there. <laughs> you channeled your Roscoe. I see. And right. like I do, I hate yeah. myself a little more for it. <laughs> All right, Shanky, go ahead and take us out. Of course, everybody, you know, uh, right now, check out chat. Follow us on our Discord. Trust me, you want to do this. This is what, you know. That's how I cast this game. Yep. I put up a casting call for anyone who wanted to play in a streamed one shot. Come join me. <laughs> so much fun. Yes. So, yep. Uh, join us on our Discord, of course. Um, right there in chat. If you like what we're doing, of course, you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to give to the players that are involved, which in this case is just Zim and Timber Brad, donations and bits go to the players, not to the studio. Studio gets subscription, bits, donations go to the players. That's how we do it here. Um, we've got... McStabber Studios merch, check out our merch link. There's merch in right over there in the merch in the chat merch link. Um, check out our other friends at Stream, of course. Um, Ravnos Archon, he, he's you know, we still press F for Ravnos Archon and his werewolf. We still feel bad about him getting murdered. Um, but he died like a champ, so that that's what like that a is. Boss. Yep, he, he went out well. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Verlin because she's gonna do scheduling. Because I don't do schedules, I, yep. I'm bad with schedule. I, I, I'm I'm the schedule mistress of McStabber Studios, along with all the other hats I hope I wear for this studio. But um, but yes. Yeah, so what we have coming up? This is actually streaming on September first. So we have coming up. If you're in our Discord, you'll be able to participate in our community Zoom chat on the third in the evening because we do community Zoom chats on our Discord. So if you're not on Discord and want to hang out with us, don't have to do a Patreon or anything to hang out and chill. Come on and join us. Um, we're doing that Friday. And then on Sunday is actually our Windy City After Dark Season 3 Summary. My husband will be there, probably playing your boy Twitch, giving a summary of what happened over the course of season three, including our intermission slash vignette that aired this past Sunday. And I'm prone to giving spoilers at some point, or at least some, some hidden insight as to what I plan. So, you know, because he not likes to spoil summer. all the shit. So that's on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And then on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, join Timber Brad here. And hopefully I'm still alive. Hopefully you're still alive for Werewolf the Apocalypse run by our amazing ST Ravenia. Um, Werewolf the Apocalypse Phoenix Call. Seriously, it's set in 1996, Why, uh, Cody, Wyoming. 
This pack has been through the shit. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, and they became and, it, and it's getting super real. And like they, they adopted a, a, a snake as their totem, you know, they, they're the totem of the, the trouser snake. Yes, now. they are. <laughs> Yes, and that's the proper look. Yes. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, but that's at 8 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. Come tune in. It's supposed to be a 10-episode arc, and we are getting so close to the end of that. So so please come on in and join us for that Tuesday. Great story developing in that game for real. And then we have pretty much that's it up until the following Sunday where we have... Windy City After Dark season four starting. Yep, because Tiss is is taking, taking her summer a month break off. Yep, she's taking a month off of, of September, so there's no Tiss streams on Saturdays with her. We'll probably have some things coming. I will say I have more. You will destroy something beautiful coming in September. Maybe Shanky will be inspired to finally run that demon game he's been promising. Well, I can't do it until uh, Werewolf is over because <laughs> it's at my limit of how many things I can do in a week. But I know Tam Shoe's also talking about some one shots. We'll see Shoe's if he gets some be, in. Yep. He's getting back in the swing of things. He's getting back in the swing of things. He's actually just did 10 candles this past Monday, and he will be back probably in September for some additional one shots. He's still in the planning stage. Crab Truckers he keeps talking about, mm -hmm. which the game that shall not be named. Crab that was just and you named. just named it. <laughs> yep, I've so named it. So that's our schedule. Do tune in to and check out our amazing stories that we tell collaboratively with amazing players. Go ahead, Shanky. And uh, everyone, as always, mental health, it's its not a joking matter. It's not a laughing matter. Please take mental health seriously. Uh, check in on those around you. Check in on friends, family, loved ones. Uh, check in on people. I don't even care if you don't like them. Please just check in on them because a lot of people right now aren't doing well and the hope is that you could be the voice that takes them off that edge and helps them to be a lifeline. And if you do suffer from mental health, like so many of us do, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to those around you. Uh, just if you need to talk to somebody, talk to them. And if you don't have anyone around you that you feel you could, you know, could help you with this right now in chat, there's a list of numbers that you can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or you can even text them and, Somebody will be on the other end of the line that can talk to you without judgment, without, you know, any kind of, you know, negative stigma attached to it because and because they're there to help. And if you're not in the U.S., because we have a number of non-U.S. viewers, uh, there's a website and chat right now that you can go to and put in your country and find out what support lines you have in your country. Because everyone, you know, you need this and there's nothing wrong with with, you know, admitting you need help once in a while. We all do. And we mm -hmm. want to make sure you have the tools to access that help if you do need it. Yep, that's correct. So uh, mm -hmm. please, everybody, take your mental health seriously. Absolutely. Please. Absolutely. And of course, I, Mama McStabber, Reland Air. I am the nicest mean nurse you'll ever meet. And Timberbrad here is the meanest nice nurse you'll ever meet. And we are both going to tell you to get your fucking COVID get shot. Get your damn shot. <laughs> It's not just about you. It's not about you. It's about you and everybody, okay? <laughs> Seriously, get the shot. Protect yourself. Protect those around you. Get vaccinated. Stop the freaking rising cases and deaths. Jesus, how this many people have to die? is preventable. It's like, preventable. It's, it's get a shot. You know, it's... yeah. It, it, it you you feel like crap for a day or two afterwards and then you bounce back and you're fine yeah so you know get it done get it done we love you here from McStabber studios out to you viewers we love you we want you to take care of yourself we want you to get what you need and basically we want you around for a long time folks so Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and you have a wonderful evening, and we will see you again soon. Yep, we'll see you soon. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>